Now, remember these sort of two guiding principles or these guiding themes. Learn in public and your voice makes it unique. Hey devs, and welcome back to the Goobar podcast, where we talk about building great software and helping others to do the same. Here we have short chats about things like software development, working in teams, and building your ideal career in tech. We aim to foster a sense of connection, inspiration, and continued learning so we can all continue to dream, learn, and create together. Do you want to write more often, but struggle to come up with ideas? Whether you're writing for your blog Uh, or another publication, you've probably struggled before to come up with topic ideas. In this week's episode, we're going to help defeat the blank page by exploring eight different ideas and themes that you can turn to the next time you want to sit down and write an article. This podcast is supported by awesome listeners like you. If you enjoy the podcast and find this episode useful, please consider subscribing and leaving us a review. It helps out the show and lets me know how to best serve you all with future episodes. If you have a question or would like to suggest a future topic idea, I'd love to hear from you. Send an email to podcast at goobar.io for your question or topic to possibly be featured in a future episode. And now let's dive into today's topic. I don't know what to write. I don't have any ideas. Nobody's going to be interested in this. Have you ever said any of these to yourself when sitting down to write? I definitely have. Hey there, devs. Nate here, back again with another episode. And if you're anything like me, you've definitely said some of these things to yourself before. You've definitely struggled to sit down and come up with ideas when you have your little bit of writing time blocked up. And in this episode, we're going to talk about how we can kind of fight that, how we can defeat the blank page, how we can have some common ideas in the back of our brain to turn to whenever we want to sit down and write something up. Now, before we get too far in, I just want to say that I hope you're doing well. I know at the time of recording this, I am kind of gearing up for the holidays here. In fact, I'm drinking some hot chocolate right now to help get myself into the the festive spirit. And so whether this is just a a random Tuesday for you, any day of the week, or you're getting ready to celebrate, I just hope that you are are doing quite well and looking forward to a a great holiday season here. Now, let's go ahead and jump back into our conversation here. So I think uh, many people would agree that writing is a great way to build your public reputation. It's a great way to learn. It's a great way to improve the way you communicate technical concepts and ideas. Writing effectively and regularly can be of great benefit in your career as well. And whether you're writing for your own uh, technical blog, contributing to another publication, writing on LinkedIn or, or Medium or somewhere else, regularly coming up with ideas can often feel like one of the biggest hurdles to writing consistent quality content. Now, because of this, it can be really helpful to have sort of a set of themes or ideas to draw on, a set of sort of lenses or or filters with which to look at uh, different ideas you might have and try to frame those into a different uh, post format or or post idea type that can help you uh, outline your post, help organize the information in your brain, and just help you to sit down and write a little bit more efficiently. In today's chat, I just want to cover a handful of these. Like I said, uh, there's going to be really kind of two themes here, and then each theme will have a couple of ideas. Now, the the two themes that these are going to be broken down into are learn in public and your voice makes it unique. So again, theme one is learn in public, and theme two here is your voice makes it unique. And so we're going to talk a little bit about each of those as we start going through some of these uh, specific blog post ideas. The first idea here is some type of tutorial summary. So this could mean that you are learning some new thing. 
you're learning a new library, you're learning a new tool, you go through some type of tutorial, you learn how to do a new thing, and then you could write up a summary of what you learned. That could include uh, pain points from that, that could include what you plan to do next, that could include links to uh, resources that supported you in that journey. But the idea here is to kind of summarize and share what you learned while going through that specific tutorial. Now, the reason this can be helpful is because it lets you sort of save time by learning something while you go through the tutorial and then being able to write about it and kind of uh, duplicating that effort. So you're both learning and you're getting to share that with others, which then helps again, sort of boost your, your public profile. It helps maybe connect others to useful resources. So it's kind of a, a win-win all the way around. Now, the next example of a learn in public type of blog post idea is a conference or meetup recap. So the idea here is that you maybe go to a conference and you write a blog post at the end that covers some of the ideas that you learned from this blog post, some of the things you might have learned, some of the resources you might have connected with. Maybe you summarize the just the overall experience and how it maybe inspired you or how you were able to connect with developers and how that's going to help you in your career or help you solve a new problem. This again is a really nice way to just sort of uh, document your, your learning process, document your experience of being involved in developer communities, and can be a really great way also to sort of get your name out there or get noticed after you attend an event. Um, this is something that I did a lot of uh, in my first um, early days of attending conferences or meetups. It was a great way to sort of get the attention of organizers and have them, you know, maybe share your your article. And um, it's a it's a fun way to just be a greater part of the developer community. Now the next one here is. Uh, you could write an article about a recent bug fix. So maybe you came across some type of specific bug in your application or whatever latest project you're working on. You could write up what that bug was and how you fixed it, especially if you can't easily Google the answer on how to solve your bug or you can't easily find it on Stack Overflow. If you can solve a unique bug, this is so much more effective. But really, fixing any bug here is a nice way to demonstrate your problem-solving skills. It can be a good way to demonstrate towards future employers that you know what you're doing, that you have good experience, and it can be a good way for you as well to just summarize your process, especially for later. You might run into the same bug down the road, and if you've written your own blog post on how to solve it, you won't have to look so hard the next time you want to solve it. Now, this is quite similar to the next idea here, which is Anytime you try a new thing, you could write a blog post about it. So maybe you're trying some new programming language. Maybe you're trying Go for the first time. You could write a blog post about your experiences trying Go for the first time. You could also write a blog post about uh, trying out a specific tool, a specific API. Any of these types of things uh, are, are great candidates to share your experience, maybe fill in the gaps where certain learning resources weren't helpful enough to you. Uh, this can be a great way to sort of curate content for the people producing the learning material, for the people trying to consume the learning material, and can be just a great way to sort of, again, get your name out there and to sort of create content around what you're already doing to learn, which then helps make you more visible to employers and other developers in the community. Now, again, similar to your experiences of trying a specific thing, uh, you might write a blog post that's more along the lines of lessons learned. So this could be maybe your team decided to migrate your mobile application from Java to Kotlin, for example. You could write a lessons learned post about what were the pros and cons of this? What were the pain points? What would you have done differently if you could go back and change your approach? These types of articles are really helpful, especially if you are uh, sharing lessons learned with some type of sort of new up and coming technology. Um, sometimes, you know, if, if this is something, you know, maybe a little bit controversial or people have strong opinions on, these types of articles can be really helpful. 
I shared a blog post about this once um, when my team at a former employer migrated away from React Native in a small part of our application. This ended up being a, a hugely popular blog post, at least for me, it's by far the most popular blog post I've ever written today. It was, I think, also really helpful because it demonstrated some real concrete lessons learned from a real production application. And so I think people really respond to that type of blog post. So again, we've, we've covered, I think, uh, five or so uh, topic ideas in this realm of learning in public. So we talked about uh, writing a summary about a recent tutorial you might have gone through. You could write a recap about a recent conference or a meetup that you attended. You could write a blog post about how you solved a recent bug. Or you might write a post about uh, your experiences trying a particular language, tool, or API. Or you might share more of a lessons learned article sharing, you know, the pros and cons of making a particular decision or choosing a particular architecture in your application. All of these are some nice general ideas that you can then tweak and make your own as you are learning, as you are trying new things, as you are growing as a developer. Now, the next set uh, of ideas here all fall under the category or the, or the theme that I like to think of as your voice makes it unique. So a lot of people struggle with the idea of coming up with ideas because they think that they're not going to have anything to say or that people aren't going to want to hear from them or it's not going to be unique enough. And I really just don't think that that's true. I think that's why this category sticks out to me because really just by writing anything and putting your own spin on it, it kind of automatically makes it unique. So I really encourage you to not limit yourself from writing or sharing or really doing anything because you're worried that it's maybe already been done. So in this realm, uh, one type of article that you could write here is really a, a opinion or, or response piece. So maybe there's a new announcement that comes out. You could write a blog post just sharing your opinion on it or your response to it. Um, an example of this from uh, my recent past was when uh, Google announced that they were going to be moving away from dessert names for their versions of Android. I wrote up a pretty short little response to that on LinkedIn about how I was sad and how I liked the dessert names, thought it was fun for the community. And that actually ended up getting picked up in their algorithm and became, um, I think, maybe the most popular thing I've ever written on LinkedIn. You know, these types of little opinions or responses can definitely uh, get your name out there. They can be a fun way to just contribute your voice to the community. And again, it's something that because you're writing it, it's automatically unique. Um, and I think, you know, that makes it worth sharing. Another idea here in this realm of your voice makes it unique is this idea of a, a list sickle post. Now, if you have no idea what list sickle means, uh, basically that's the idea of a post that's like the theme to this podcast episode, actually. So eight blog post ideas, you know, seven of the most helpful libraries for, you know, JVM server side development, you know, six most helpful resources to learn Kotlin programming language. These types of things where you're collecting your thoughts on useful resources, uh, tools, libraries, any type of sort of curated collection of things kind of falls into this category of, of a listicle. Because often these things are written as just bullet points or, or numbered points of here's a resource, here's another thing, here's another thing. So this, again, can be a nice way to sort of take your spin, collect useful resources, collect links, tutorials, whatever it is, package those up into a nice blog post format and share those out with other people and kind of help guide them uh, towards things that maybe have helped you. The last uh, a type of blog post I want to cover here, and this one, uh, this one kind of falls into both of these categories of learning in public and your voice makes it unique. And this one is kind of what actually a lot of people think of when they think of writing a blog post, which is a novel solution to something. So if you come up with a novel solution, meaning, you know, you haven't seen other people talk about this or, you know, it was pretty unique to your situation. Maybe even you tweak just like one little thing from an existing solution. Those types of things that are a little bit more unique, absolutely make awesome blog post ideas. Um, they're, they're great to share. They can really drive forward 
the state of the art within any kind of developer ecosystem as well. Um, and so definitely, if you feel like you've come up with a pretty unique solution to something, share it. You know, it might not be the right solution for everybody. It might have some problems with it, but that's okay. Everybody's ideas um, go through that type of thing, and it can actually be a great way to validate and refine your ideas because once they're out there in public, you might get feedback, and then you can improve on those. I've definitely done this with uh, articles I've written where I, I share something, people point out you know, things that could be unchanged or improved, and I'm able to take those back, improve my solution, and then maybe even bring that back into my projects or back to my team and be you know, more productive or come up with a better solution for whatever it is that we're working on. So again, I think it's generally you know, lots of wins across the board from sharing that type of novel solution in you know, an article or blog post. So that's going to pretty much close it out for this week. And you know, we, we covered a, a bunch of ideas there uh, real quick. And I hope these ideas will come in handy the next time you're struggling to find a, a topic for an article or blog post. And so to just kind of summarize here again, you know, remember these sort of two guiding principles or these guiding themes. Learn in public and your voice makes it unique. So when we think of learning in public, you know, this could be writing articles to summarize useful tutorials you found, uh, solutions to solving a particular bug, or lessons learned from making particular choices in your projects. And then your voice makes it unique. So if you have a response or an opinion to share about a, a particular announcement or a new tool or something, share it. Share how you think it might impact uh, the ecosystem. Share how you think it might impact your projects. If you come up with a, a novel solution to a problem, again, share it. That's a great way to show what you've learned and to show how you presented the, the challenge and the solution and hopefully help push forward the state of the art within your developer ecosystem. Now, all of these ideas you can use directly, but I think better yet, uh, you'll use them as kind of a jumping off point. You know, maybe look at these ideas and you can find them down in the, the show notes or you can you know go through and listen to this episode again. Uh, but, but look at them and maybe create your own set of themes and topic ideas about things that you want to write about. Maybe a few of these resonate more with you than others, and maybe you have some other ideas, or maybe you wanna take something like a recent bug fix and you wanna make that more specific. Maybe you wanna write a series of articles about a particular class of bug fixes, maybe all the bugs related to some particular library or something. You know, create your own set of themes and topic ideas. You know, once you do that, once you start that brainstorming, you'll likely start finding ideas in almost everything you do. And you might eventually find that your biggest challenge in sitting down to write is just filtering through your uh, list of ideas, which is a much nicer problem to have than not having any ideas that you want to write about. So, so again, you know, take this set of uh, topic ideas, make them your own, you know, write them down somewhere so you can look back on them, so you can update them as you go, and then go for it. You know, bring that idea to life and hit the publish button. You know, if you've been on the fence about writing your next article, I want to encourage you and challenge you to dive in and use one of these ideas to start writing. You know, pick an idea or theme, write your article this week, and then send it out into the world. Hit that publish button and let other people see what you've done. And if you would like, I would be happy to review your work if you want to send over a draft. Um, and uh, if you want to tag me on social media after you share your work, uh, I would be happy to reshare that and help you know get that seen by more people as well. So with that, we're going to go ahead and end this here. You know, thank you so much for listening, everybody. Remember to dream, learn, and create, and I will catch you all in the next episode. Until next time, devs. <laughs>